I really cannot believe that I am about to do a headset review. I swear I would never do another one of these. Yeah, it's no joke. I have not done a headset review in a long time and a couple reasons for that. One, I'm not an audiophile. And anytime you talk about audio, the audiophiles like to come in and, and really sort of flex their audiophile muscles. And um, yeah, I'm not talking to you today. I'm talking to the average buyer who wants to get better than the typical shitty Chinese knockoff headsets that you get with gaming headsets that sound terrible, have horrible microphones, and just leave your ears practically bleeding at the end of the day. So that's why I'm talking to you, average gamer who wants a better sound experience, because today we're taking a look at Sennheiser's new PC373D 7.1 surround gaming headset. I want to give a huge congratulations to the winner of the GTX 1080 G1 Gaming Giveaway, William Lines. I have more stuff to give away this holiday season, so make sure you grab your lucky charms. And no, that isn't a euphemism. So stay tuned. All right, this is my second time warning you. If you're one of those audiophiles that gets all tripped up on all the specs and you care about this and that and frequency range and all, you're, you've come to the wrong place. That's your second warning. So you don't have a foot to stand on if you don't like the way I do this review. Tough. Anyway, two years ago, I did the Sennheiser Game Zeros, uh, a review of these guys, because I thought it was interesting that a company like Sennheiser which makes like HD 800 headphones that are considered to be the best in the world, I, I guess depending on who you ask, has dabbled in making gaming headsets. And it's not their first time, but man, are they getting good at it. And the Game Zeros were awesome. Um, they had a couple drawbacks though. They were hot, they were closed back. They, if you put the leather ear cups on, then they get very sweaty. Um, but the sound was amazing, especially for a stereo headset. The microphone quality was really good, although it could use a better windscreen because your P's and other sounds tend to make pops in the microphone, which makes me want to put it away from my mouth a little bit. But everything about these just screamed quality. The problem was they also took a lot of power to drive in the beginning. And if you didn't have a DAC or any sort of a preamp on your motherboard, then you were gonna get not the greatest sound experience. So let's go ahead and fast forward to today. Now the new Sennheiser PC373D, still know what the number means, but it's interesting, kind of takes a lot of the heritage here from the Game Zero, builds upon it, but then also takes some of the things I loved about the Game Zero and nixes it. So I'm kind of curious about some of the design decisions they made. For instance, the Game Zeros, as you can see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be going back and forth here, guys. Sorry, you just gotta deal with that. And also too, if I sound nasally, I've got a cold but I'm dedicated to you guys, so I'm working anyway. I'm not calling in sick. God, my boss is an asshole anyway. These fold up so that you can put them in a carrying bag or something. They even come with a carrying case, actually. And as you can see, they uh, fold up pretty nicely. They even fold up flat like this. That's kind of how they go in their case. You see how flat they are? And it makes them very friendly when it comes to traveling. These guys, however, do not fold up at all. In fact, I didn't even check. I don't know, did they even come with a bag? I forgot to even check. Nope, it does not. It just has a plastic sleeve in there that they were that they were in. Believe it or not, Coconut Monkey is actually the one that unboxed these. He came over one day to play some games. I need some headphones. I was like, here, buddy, did you try these out? And I handed them to him and the rest was history. It's got pretty much the same microphone as the Game Zero, but one of the major differences is these are an open back and they have velvet ear cups, which allow a lot of breathing. Now I've worn these for several hours at a time and the new open back design and velvet ear cups actually make it so that my ears weren't sweating. And what I like about that is I typically do not like velvet ear cups at all. It tends to get itchy and I just don't like the way it feels. But that didn't really bother me with these guys right here. Maybe it's the open back. Maybe it's, it's the velvet feeling when I start to sweat on a closed back headphone that I don't like. But whatever the case may be, these were very, very comfortable. Of course, it's got the volume knob on the side right here, so you don't have to reach for the dongle to try and turn it up and down. You can do it right there on your ear, same as on the Game Zeros. But this is a USB cord, so you're not gonna have to worry about plugging these into any sort of an amp or a DAC. But it also means if you wanted to use them for listening to like your MP3 player, you can't do that though, which you could have done with the Game Zeros and just left the mic folded up. Speaking of mic folding up, that is how you actually mute the thing. There's no mute button you've got to reach for. Let's say you're gaming and you're like this, you know, you're, you're playing your game stuff and your mom comes in and is like, did you do your homework? You don't want to be like, mom, I'm busy right now playing my games because then everyone's going to hear that and they're going to be like, you know, you're going to get embarrassed. It's going to get recorded, put up on YouTube and then you're forever going to be, you know, uh, embarrassed at the fact that you were caught on, on Discord arguing with your mom. But if you want to mute it, push it up, there's a very noticeable click, and then the mic is not only out of the way, it is also completely muted. Something else I really like too, is there's a much thicker pad up here on the top of the headset. And although these are not very heavy, they're only, I believe, 710 grams, very light. Um, 
The one on top of the Game Zeros right here, although leather, was not quite as thick and it squished a bit more and you started to feel the weight of the headphones. The Game Zeros are a little bit heavier than the 373D. So now's the part we're gonna talk about sound. Remember, I'm talking about my experiences here, which is gonna be entirely 100% subjective and your opinions may differ and your results may vary. But anyway, here's the dongle right here. The only button on this thing, the only reason this thing is here is to turn on and off the Dolby mode, the Dolby surround. I kind of wonder why they, if they couldn't have just made a button on the ear cup or the ear can then you wouldn't have needed this dongle. And the other thing I find kind of interesting about this, and I just don't know why that's the case, is it unplugs to a micro USB. It's just a regular old micro USB cable here, one point three, is it 1.3 meter? I believe it's 1.3 meter. And it's like the same one you would charge your Android with. I don't know why that exists. I'll be honest, because it's not like it came with another cable or anything in there where you could make it, you know, play regular audio, like on an MP3 player or something. I just, I'll be honest, I don't know. But when you first plug these in, USB of course, they sound extremely flat. I was actually very disappointed. I was thinking, I expected better from Sennheiser. I was completely flabbergasted. I didn't know what the issue was until I decided to download their software. Then they woke up because the software communicates with these and the software on the, on the PC obviously controls the EQ because it is a USB sound card, an all contained unit here. And then they woke up and started to sound freaking phenomenal. I mean, they, they it's Sennheiser, they sound great. Now the EQ unfortunately is not user definable. You cannot adjust sliders and make the EQ just how you want it. You only get four settings if you include off, otherwise you get three, that being music, gaming, and esports. Now, gaming and esports kind of sound the same, right? So you go, what, what, what the heck? What's the difference? Well, gaming, it's very emphasized on just kind of the loudness is up, the explosions are very boomy, the bass is very heavy, but manageable, doesn't hurt your head. Remember, these are 7.1 drivers in here, so they are not going to be like a huge 50 millimeter driver pounding bass into your head. It sounds very full, um, realistic, especially playing games like Battlefield 1. It's just like the sound is so damn good. Now eSports, what it does is it flattens out all of that and it boosts up and emphasizes the vocal range of the human voice to make it so that you can hear and prioritize what you hear from your teammates. Because in eSports, obviously it's all about communication and less about the sounds of the game. Who cares what the game sounds like? You wanna hear footsteps, gunfire, and the people talking, but most importantly, the people talking. Now the music setting was a lot like gaming where the bass was punchy and tight, but it didn't it didn't kill your ears. It wasn't like Beats by Dre and those pieces of crap. The highs were very crisp. I liked the way everything sounded. It sounded very full. The sound stage was wide and I, it made listening to music very enjoyable. So I don't know exactly what the difference is between music and gaming because you can't see the EQ. You can't see the sliders. You just click a button. And that's it. Now, of course, the Dolby is engageable. That's even a word on all of those settings, but it's really gonna be mo most noticeable in gaming, right? Because music is mixed down to two channels left and right. And really games are the only place where you're gonna notice the 7.1, especially in games like Battlefield, where they just really take advantage of the, the enormous sound stage and sounds happening all around you. I, I love the visuals of Battlefield, but man, the sounds, the sounds are what make Battlefield just so much fun. So now we're gonna talk about the microphone. We'll do a sound test with the mic because sometimes you get really good audio and a shitty mic with a headset. Or you get a really good mic and you get shitty audio. But anyway, let's go ahead and see how the Sennheiser sound. Here's your mic test of the Sennheiser 373D. Uh, looks like we're hitting about negative 15 to negative 12 on the dB meter with the mic positioned immediately in front of my mouth. I wish it was a little bit more sensitive, but as you can see with a small microphone of this nature, it's got kind of a tinny, you know, headset sound. You're never gonna get large diaphragm condenser mic sound out of a headset, but I digress. It does seem like the windscreen is improved because I can say Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers and it's not just going pop, 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 in your ears. So that's that, that there's an improvement there at least. All right, so they're not the best, but they're not the worst either. I'd say it's kind of right in the middle. They've got really it's a challenge to get a tiny little microphone in here and make it sound amazing. But I mean, ultimately what it is, it's very well rounded. Now, if you are a gamer looking for better than average audio, you're definitely going to get it. But the last thing to mention here is these are very pricey. They are 250 US dollars. That is like double what you would typically pay for a decent gaming headset. 
Now, the only thing I could really suggest is try and find some sort of Sennheiser retailer where they have got these on display and take a listen for yourself. Anyway, guys, I just wanted to share this with you. I wasn't planning on doing this video. I mean, it was they were kind of sent over to see if I wanted to check them out, and I did, and I've been using them for a while, and finally I was like, you know what? I'm gonna share this with you guys, and hopefully they'll like it. Oh, no, that's something I forgot to mention. Of course, it pulls out from there too, so. Yeah, there's that. I forgot to mention that. All right, guys, time to go. Um, I Like I said, I'm not gonna do a lot of these headset reviews. So don't be like, oh my God, I don't like the direction that this channel's going. I don't like headset reviews. I'm, I'm not doing them all the time. I just wanted to share these with you because I thought that they were actually pretty darn good. And for the price, they better be. But anyway, that's I digress. So, all right, guys, time to go. And as always, I will see you in the next one.